Hi, I'm Chad, and you're watching Square Body Stuff. All right, in this video, we're going to go over real quick on how to cut open an uh, oil filter. Doesn't seem to be too complicated. There's a couple different ways you could do it. You definitely don't want to use anything that's going to create shavings, like a saw or a grinder or anything like that. Uh, I have seen some people use like 10 snips. You poke a hole in it and you kind of cut around it and that'll work too, but it leaves kind of jagged edges. And uh, if you're gonna do a bunch of them, uh, invest in the tool. Uh, Summit Racing has them for like 30 or 40 bucks. Uh, not a necessity, but if you want to keep track of what's going on inside your engine, uh, with me, you know, I've got several vehicles. I like to try to keep an eye on what's going inside of them, if they got any shavings, if there's anything going on. And in this video, we're gonna be cutting open the oil filter that was on my 339 stroker. That guy right there, he's a little bit hidden, but uh, we're gonna cut the oil filter that was on that thing when I broke it in. See what's all, what all's going on in there. I, I expect to find maybe a few little metal flakes or something in there just from the break in, but uh, yeah, we'll just cut it open and see what happens. Now essentially this is just a oversized tubing or pipe cutter. Uh, works on the same principle. You got some rollers on this side, you got the cutting blade on this side, and you use it pretty much the same, but you want to make sure that you don't just crank it down and cut it open and then start doing it. That's that's how you'll break these uh, these rollers or these cutters. You want to get it started, make a little indention, work your way around, then, then tighten it just a little bit, maybe quarter turn every revolution until you cut it open. That way you're not putting so much pressure on your cutting blade and don't break it. I mean, they're replaceable, they're not that expensive, but you can get a lot of life out of one if you use it properly. So go ahead and get it set on there. And just getting a little pressure on it. And just start working your way around. Don't force it. I wasn't ready. It's going to loosen up in the vise because now it don't have any structure. Okay. That always come out perfect. And you still got sharp edges, so be careful. Don't need that guy anymore. This is your backflow valve. Then you've got, it's kind of clamped in there. So I've let this oil filter kind of drain out for a couple days. And there we go. Now you don't really have to cut the pleats out of there. Uh, you can spread them apart. Kind of see what's going on. So far I don't see anything major. Or you can also just cut the pleats out. Once you get the filter media out of there, you can really spread it apart and see what's going on. I don't see any. Eh, there's a couple little little flakes here and there. Nothing, nothing major. And I don't have an oil filter bypass. I've got an aftermarket billet filter adapter, so it won't pipe bypass the filter. It always will have filtered oil going through the engine so yeah we're looking good I don't see anything bad in here like I said there's a few little little things here and there but nothing nothing that looks like bearing material or it don't look like a 70s sparkly boat paint job oh there's 
I keep seeing this pink stuff. Uh, I was like, what is pink in there? But I remember I used a pink paint marker to mark mark uh, my bolts, my rod bolts and main bolts and stuff, make sure I had them tight. No, nope. all is good. And you also want to look in the bottom of your can, make sure you don't have any sparklies. It looks a little dirty, but a lot of that is the, uh, the assembly lube that I used. That's why it looks kind of dark, but there's no no sparkles or anything in there. That's good stuff. And remember, if you're using a tool like that, just take it nice and easy. Go real slow. That way you're not forcing it too much. You don't break anything. That pretty much goes with a little bit of everything in this world. If you have to force it, it's you probably ought to back up and, and figure out the situation. You have a more harmonious outcome that way. So that gives you peace of mind knowing what's going on inside your engine. Uh, and so far, everything looks good for this guy. And kind of an update on what's going to go on with this thing. I've been trying to uh, get some dyno time on the engine dyno. Right now, everybody's booked up until after the first of the year. So what I might do is just go ahead and throw it in old Squeaky and drive him around a little bit and hook him up to the hub dyno first. Then once we get some uh, engine dyno time scheduled later on, pull it back out, hook him to the, the engine dyno, see what he makes the crank. Well, that's all I've got for you guys. I appreciate you watching. Hope you learned something. Uh, until next time, y'all keep your square bodies rolling. We'll catch you later.